Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so welcome to part three, the final part of Archie Luxury's collection review. This is gonna be my favorite part where we talk about his five Rolexes. And so in uh, honor of that, I have broken out a piece of Watch Symposium memorabilia. Now I have no mustache or mullet, but uh, if you guys have seen my my earlier videos, then then you might recognize this piece of clothing I'm, I'm wearing. And I uh, feel like I should say something nasty about Squale right now while, while I have it on. Um, all right, so, well, let's, let's get into uh, Archie's Rolexes. And first of all, uh, he's got five Rolexes, all right? He's got a Milgauss, an Explorer, an Explorer II, a Daytona, and a Sub. And the pontiff himself advises steel professional Rolexes. And that's great advice. I'm gonna go one better. Steel professional rotating and or informational bezeled Rolexes. Because when you have steel professional Rolexes, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a top tier to those. And, and those are the, the ones with the rotating uh, or informational bezels. So I'm talking about the Explorer II, the Sub, uh, the Yacht Master, the Deep Sea, the Sea Dweller, and the Daytona. And those are sort of the cream of the crop. They're the best of the best. And let's look, uh, what does Archie have uh, that falls into that, to that top tier steel sports watch category? He's got the Explorer II. And Explore 2 is an awesome watch. I have one myself. Love the the white dial. Um, his is a 2003 or later piece, I want to say, because it's got the Super Luminova, solid in links, and the no holes case. Now, I prefer the, the holes cases, not for the vintage look, though it's not something I mind, uh, but more for the the functionality and the ease of uh, taking off and putting on the bracelet and changing straps and whatnot. And, and uh, it's not so much taking off the bracelet, but making sure that you have those spring bars seated correctly because having that visual confirmation just sort of uh, gives you some peace of mind. Uh, the idea of, of, do I have that spring bar in the hole? Uh, you know, I've, I've missed it a few times on other watches and you know having your watch come off can be a bit unnerving so uh having that visual confirmation is kind of nice and so that's sort of why i i i like the functionality of of a holes case uh they're a little cheaper as well so you get added functionality um for a cheaper price so i think that's a win but a lot of people would say that the the no holes case is the way to go and that's sort of the the, the top tier right there the 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 sweetest of the sweet spot and um and certainly in japan i think i think so uh, i think the aesthetic of the no holes cases i think are more popular here uh and so uh in that sense he's he's got a really good piece a really good explorer too now um if you're getting really picky you know it's always uh you know nice to think about those those later say like m uh, serial or I want to say late Z serials that have the 3186 movements uh, they're they're something to have uh, quite a quite a uh, 3186 three, movement has the the blue perichrome spring as as opposed to the I guess non perichrome spring uh, like like what's what's in the 3185 movement which is in my Explore 2 and, and both my GMTs and uh, and that, that newer movement is, is sort of uh, a grill for many people, uh, is very collectible. In fact, I've got a viewer that got a great price on uh, 3186 Movement Explorer 2. And, and I tell you, if you can find a 3186 Movement uh, GMT Master 2, they didn't make many of those. And so that's, uh, that'll add, I think, about four grand to, uh, well, four grand, at least four grand, I'll put it that way. Um, some people really try to scalp you with with the three one eight six movement GMTs, uh, so they're they're sort of the 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 top of the top. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I think I just went off on a tangent, didn't I? All right, back to Archie. So yeah, he's got that that Explorer two, and uh, and that that 
fits nicely uh, in that, that top of the top tier. Now, uh, let's talk about that top tier of all steel professional informational bezel Rolexes. So within that top tier, there's sort of a, a hierarchy and let's go through it. So the worst of the best would be the Explorer 2. It's, uh, it's the cheapest and the most economical uh, right now. And will it go up in the future? I don't know, some people think so, some people think it won't. I think the, the sort of the sub and the GMT aesthetic looks better, I think it's more popular, I think it's more iconic, those are more iconic pieces. So, you know, 20 years down the road, I think the GMT and the sub are gonna be good bets, but the, the Explore 2, yeah, I don't know, I mean, I would have to say maybe not, okay? Uh, I don't think, you know, and, and yeah, I don't think so, I don't think so, okay? Um, just because I don't think they're quite like iconic in the same way that the, the, uh, the sub and the GMT aesthetic is. You know, those are the father of, of many, many dive watches, right? And, uh, you know, the sub is, and, and really the sub and the GMT look, are, they're very, very similar. Uh, so you've got, in that top tier, you've got the G, uh, sorry, the, the Explore 2. Okay, that's sort of the, like again, it's the, it's, the, it's the worst of that best top tier. And then I would say the, the, the Yacht Master, maybe about the same. Maybe the Yacht Master's a little, a little bit more desirable. And then you've got, you know, the, the date subs and the no date subs. And I would say maybe the no date subs, uh, pre-ceramic. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys debate that, but you got the subs here. And, and then you got the, the sea dwellers and the deep sea, which I think, uh, you know, a lot of people like it, but that's, it's a huge watch and I'm not into the aesthetic, but it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing watch. And it's definitely like one of these say, top, top tier, uh, watches. And, uh, and then the top of the top, the, 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 the best of the best would be the GMT, uh, and, and the Daytona, uh, and so that's sort of the, the ranking of those. Now, um, of his five, uh, he's got one in, in that, that sort of top tier professional steel, um, informational bezeled or, you know, rotating slash informational bezel, uh, tier. Okay. He's got the Explore too. Um, and so, yeah, that's great. Uh, good. Um, now, uh, he's had that for a while, and look, it's easy to go back and say, you know, you should have done this, and you should have done that. And you're talking to a guy that uh, spent probably way too much money recently on uh, GMT Master 2. And so if you're going to play the, the shit a game, then, um, well, I'm, I'm living in a glass house here because I should have picked up that two years ago, or three years ago, or four years ago, all right? Um, so, so the whole shoulda thing maybe is not some, some place we should go. But uh, I will say that while the Explore 2 has gone up recently uh, by a couple thousand, I want to say, uh, the GMT Master 2 has gone up more. Okay, so back when Archie and, and then later I got the Explore 2, even though it was a deal compared to the GMT Master 2. You would have been better off at that time to buy GMT Master 2. Um, but live and learn, right? Live and learn, and you can't go back in the past. And and uh, I certainly know that if I if I could, um, I would have uh, bought my my most recent GMT much earlier. Okay, so uh, so should Archie have? Uh, bought the GMT instead of the, the Explorer 2. Well, again, I mean, it's not, it's not fair 2020 hindsight and, 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 and you know, it's unfair me to, to, for me to say uh, that he should have, but, but probably he should have, but, but he loves that, 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 that aesthetic. And, and I'm looking at it purely from a, from a um, monetary point of view. Right. Um, and so, uh, it's a fantastic watch and he loves the aesthetic and, and I, I agree. I think the white dialed is the one to have. 
that's a very special watch in the sense that, you know, there are not many white dialed uh, Rolex professional steel models, are there? I mean, um, I can't really think of any others. Well, the, I guess the Milgauss, right? But, but again, that's not in that top, top tier. Uh, so, so it is an amazing watch, and uh, it's very usable, and uh, I love that watch, and he's got a great uh, version, and that's probably one of my favorite favorite Rolexes of his, okay? Uh, now, let's talk about his other steel professional model watches, and that's the Milgauss and the Explorer, and... Yeah, they're desirable, but they are not in that top tier. Okay, they don't. They've got the the smooth bezels, and they're 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 you know, hey, they're a heck of a lot better than say a two two tone J Datejust or uh, Oyster Perpetual or something like that. But uh, but they're not really in the same class as, as those uh, informational bezel Rolex watches. And I don't think in the future either of those will really increase in price a lot. I think they'll hold their value, but um, I can't see them, you know, I think, I think to quote uh, Clyde, uh, you know, all boats rise with the rising tide of, of these uh, informational bezel Rolexes. And so as, as those go, go up, I think all, you know, all, all of these steel sports Rolexes will go up to some extent, but but, but I think, uh, um, you know, I don't think we're going to see those really take off in the future. And there's a heck of a lot of pre-owned explorers on the market. Now, you can't really get those uh, at the AD, but you see a lot of those on the pre-owned market. And, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're uh, I think they're distinctly in that, in that sort of uh, second tier of, of the, the steel sports professional, um, you know, Rolex models. Um, you know, the, the, the Explorer, what can I say about it? Well, he's got a Mark one dial. So it's got the three, six, nine in all gold. And then the shorter, uh, minute hand. Now, some people think that's going to be collectible. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. I probably would have gone the Mark two, dial just because you know look i'm a picky guy and and just a, a few millimeters on that that minute hand would drive me crazy but in 10 or 20 years the the sort of relatively short run of the mark one dial could uh could be uh, a good thing it might make it more collectible and, and and who knows now i wouldn't pay more for it but um but you don't know what people will do in the in the in the future, you know, um, so, so, uh, we'll, we'll see on that one, but, uh, I think the 36 millimeter Explorers, I think the proportions are better there, but I think for, for Archie's body type, I think 39 is the way to go. I think for me, I would go 36, and I think for most people, I think 36 looks better, uh, but, uh, but, you know, bigger watches, some people think, like, that's, it looks more masculine, uh, I, I, I think, Again, the 36, I think, looks better, but I think for Archie, the 39 is, is, is the, probably the way to go. Um, yeah, uh, what can I say about the Explorer? I think it's... Um, I feel like... A, I feel about the Explorer what a, a non-watch person probably thinks about a Rolex. Okay, you, you show a, a non-watch person a Rolex and they say, that's a really good-looking watch, and then you tell them the price and they say, wow never spend that kind of money on one. I mean, if I had that much money, money to blow, that's just not something I'd, I'd, I'd buy. It's just not worth it to me. And I feel the same way about the Explorer. It's it's a great watch, uh, but I think it's kind of boring, okay? And and for that reason, if you're talking, you know, a couple thousand dollars, you're ready to spend on a watch, it's just one of the last pieces I'd go for. Uh, but he has it because he had a three, uh, wait, no, it was a 1016, and that's sort of, uh, you know, in honor of his uh, former 1016, and so I can see that. Um, but uh, I, you know, I lean towards the Oyster Perpetuals, and a, a lot of people would say that the Explorer is the way to go, but I sort of look at the, the Oyster Perpetual 36 millimeter as, or been a 34 millimeter, I guess, if you want to be really authentic, 
as sort of the, the, the real explorer. I mean, it was, uh, it was a perpetual that, that went to the summit of Mount Everest. So uh, in a way, the explorer is sort of a, 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 a homage piece in a way, right? And um, I mean, it's still it's still a cool piece, but but uh, but there's something kind of nice about just a straight up a perpetual, and you get those beautiful dial colors, and I think that's what draws me to those. But you know, there's something uh, you know again more sporty about the the Explorer. It's got the instead of the crown, it's got the triangle, and you've got the the Mercedes hand. So uh, I can see why people are drawn to it, but uh, yeah, I, I probably would would go Oyster Perpetual. Um, but I don't think that's what Archie should have done. I, I think, uh, you know, he, he we wanted a replacement to that 1016 and I, I think he got it. And uh, and hopefully the, the Mark I dial will work in his favor. And Archie doesn't sweat the little things. He's not worried about a few millimeters on a on a a minute hand, so he didn't care about stuff like that. And and I think I I, I would uh, yeah I would advise someone like him to to uh, you're not going to worry about those millimeters on on the minute hand. So just go for the the potential of collectability that the Mark One dial has. So uh, yeah, uh, that's that's a. Uh, a great watch and you can use it in all situations and and uh, and it'll hold its value uh, so I think that's a, a great piece of his collection but uh, it's just not something I'll ever go uh, for just because um, it just doesn't uh, turn me on and I think they're kind of boring all right but still a great Rolex um, now also in that sort of uh, sub tier would be the Milgauss. Um, again, it's a, it's a professional model, but it's a smooth bezel. And um, I think uh, the fact that he's got the black dial without the, the green, the green uh, sapphire crystal. Yeah, I think, I think that's nice. I think that's probably the best looking of the sort of modern-ish uh, Milgausses. And uh, you know, my grandfather, you know, who had the Hamilton, the Wedgefield, and, and the Timex, he worked on electrical transformers, like these huge things. And so whenever I see a Milgauss, I always think that would have been the perfect watch for him. Um, and I wish he had gotten one for himself. Uh, who knows? He wasn't into watches and stuff like that. But, um, but whenever I see a Milgauss, I think, you know, it was made for a guy like that. And, uh, my grandmother was, she grew up in the depression and so she was, she was so frugal that there's no way she would have sanctioned that. But um, that's why you can't always check with the wife, right? Um, but anyway, so I do, I, I like the Milk House and, uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool watch. And I think he's right in having the black, black dial. I think that's a discontinued version and I think it's more desirable than the white with uh, the orange indices, which I think is a really attractive watch. I, and I like the orange, orange indices because they kind of look vintagey to me. Um, but I got to tell myself there, there's not the vintage thing going on. Those are that's the orange color. Uh, but but I think the the black dialed is is probably has more collector's potential uh, because I think all of the the Milgausses now have the that green tinted glass that's, that's sort of a you know a, a milgauss thing now with all the the contemporary milgausses um uh a, a milgauss institution that's what i was that's the phrase i was looking for so uh yeah um again i think it'll probably hold its value but again i don't think uh just like the explorer i don't think you're looking at uh, massive increases in prices. Um, again, it's uh, they don't have that that sports watch look, okay? And it's that smooth bezel, and that's what keeps them from being in, the, in that that top tier. And uh, they are professional. I mean, no doubt about it. And they're desired, but uh, distinctly less so uh, than the informational rotating bezel watches, okay? Um, 
All right, let's talk about the two tones. So, all right, well, Archie used to say two tones are soft. And so it's kind of surprising to see him um, go that route. But uh, but I think maybe he's in the in a period when a period in his life when when a two tone might make sense. And um, what can I say about two tones? Okay, let me just talk about two tones and my feelings about two tones for a second. Uh, all right, so there's functionality, okay, and you get the functionality of of all steel that that lovely 904L steel, okay, that strength and and that aesthetic, and, and then you've got something like a, a an all gold sub, and so if you sort of want a little bit of the strength but some of the bling, I can see going two tone, but I'm more of an all or nothing guy. I'm I'm going total bling, okay, or I'm going full functionality, all right? So, um, and for me, it's a no-brainer because uh, I really, I'm not partial to the aesthetic of gold uh, and, and and the lack of functionality and strength and and, and and the greater cost. So I'm I'm steel all the way, I'm steel all the way. Now, I can see how having sort of the, the best of both worlds might make sense for some people, and, and I can see that, um, but, uh, but the, the two-tone color uh, can look gaudy, and that's one of the reasons that, that I dislike it. And yeah, I mean, there's two ways to look at it. You get the strength, but also a bit of the bling. Um, but for, for me, I kind of look at it as uh, you sacrifice some of the strength for a little bit of gaudiness, okay? So it's just sort of a perception thing. Um, you know, I think if you look at Archie and like the kind of the type of guy he is, you know, he, he sort of looks like the, you know, the gluttonous, hedonist kind of guy that you would expect to have a two-tone and it sort of works with, with his body style and uh, he doesn't look like he maybe is going to push the limits of an all-steel uh, sports watch. You know, it doesn't really look like he's gonna he's gonna take a take a you know uh, an all steel. He doesn't look like he's gonna push the limits of his Explorer Two. All right, he gets winded walking around with his his camera. So so I think I don't think he needs the functionality, and I you know I don't either. But um, but I think certain people that that uh, you know, who look less active. Uh, the the two tone, all gold look fits. It's like it's sort of that uh, that hedonistic, materialistic uh, look of of the the guy that he looks like he enjoys life in all of its uh, many forms, be it luxury or food or um, you know all of the pleasures that life have to offer. So uh, so the two tone fits with with. Archie's overall look, uh, perhaps much more so than than uh, an all steel piece. Now, um, a Daytona two tone they run for about sixteen, seventeen thousand starting uh, here in Japan, and it's only when you get up to about the eighteen thousand mark that you start to see the. The all steel pieces. So the all steel pieces are more desirable, and my guess is that Archie knows that, and I think he possibly got a great deal on that Daytona. I don't think he paid sixteen for it. If he did pay sixteen for it, then I would I would have advised to tack on another two thousand, uh, which when you're talking that kind of money, two grand is like nothing, right? Uh, to get the all steel Daytona, right? Um, doesn't have to be the ceramic, but just just a you know more lower priced uh, steel bezeled Daytona. Uh, I think that that's probably the way I would have gone. Um, but uh, he 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 seems to like it, and uh, and so you know again it it sort of it fits fits with him, and it does have that sort of uh, bling. And you know the older you get in life, uh, the the better gold looks. But, you know, two-tone works really well 
on the date just on an older gentleman, all right? Uh, but, you know, on, on tool watches, for me, I, it just sort of detracts uh, from, from the, from the look of a, the look of a tool watch, right? Um, and so, yeah, it's just uh, not, not quite not quite something I would go for. But, um, but yeah, Archie's you know Archie's getting up there, um, only about like five years ahead of me. But uh, but as you get older, I think I think you know the the two tone uh, sort of gold look uh, works. You know, my my dad, uh, he's getting up there. He's in his seventies now, and he has a sort of a, a two-tone uh, uh, while. What is it? What is that? What does he have? Uh, Andrew Weil. Andrew Weil. Is that a, is that what it is? Okay. I'm I'm sorry. I'll put I'll put a thing down. But you know, he would he would uh, he would probably love uh, the aesthetic of a, a two-tone. Date just, and I think I would love to see my dad have a two-tone date just, um, but uh, but but he's pretty keen on this this quartz uh, wild watch of his, and, and it, it you know he's not a watch guy, so it's fine. But um, so older guy with with a, you know a, a two-tone date just, I think is great. Um, but again, um, if 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 my dad were to say, well, well, what about a what about the you know the sports model? I'd say, well, if you're gonna go sports, you can kind of. Let's be pure about it, and let's 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 get a steel piece, right? Um, so, so yeah, uh, my guess is that that Archie probably got a deal on it, and um, I don't I don't know. Maybe he did search it out, but uh, you know, if you're searching out uh, a Daytona, uh, I, I again I would I would go I would go all steel, right? Uh, but you're gonna pay more for it, uh, so. You know, there's some people that 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 just seems like a crazy proposition. Pay more for steel, um, or less, and you get the gold. Now, yeah, you get it, but you're gonna get a less a, a less uh, gaudy looking piece. I mean, what are you gonna do in the future? Like melt it down? Um, but but again, I think people feel a little bit uh, like it makes a little bit more sense uh, paying maybe paying less for for gold, right? Anyway, um, it's got the the Maserati blue dial, which, uh, you know, I think the gaudiness of two-tone um, calls for sort of a more subdued dial, so I, I'd probably go uh, black or white dial. I think there's something classy about a black or white dialed <clears throat> Daytona, kind of classic. And uh, and so I think um, the, the Maserati is is and that's a lot of colors you're you're looking at there, um, so it's certainly eye catching. But I think a, a black or a white dial would sort of uh, temper temper that uh, that look, um, and it's a more of a subdued blue. Uh, and you know some people might like it. I think a beautiful blue is that sub or Archie's uh, solid gold sub, which had kind of a purpley dial to it. I mean, that now that's a blue that pops. And you know, some there's there's sort of the subdued blues and then you've got that that beautiful, like bluesy sub blue. And now that's a heck of a, a dial color. And so if you're comparing those two two tones, I think, yeah, they're both blue, but by far the, the, the sub, dial is absolutely beautiful and uh you know again it's uh it, it's a two-tone and um it's a later piece it's one of the last uh, runs i want to say it's a v serial and so archie thinks that possibly it could be you know uh collectible and i think you know i don't know i mean again i don't think two tones really are but that's such a beautiful dial that I imagine people might want to get it in the in the in the future. So, so I love the dial, and it's almost worth having the two tone to get that dial, you know. Um, but uh, but it does come at a price. Is the two tone thing right? So so, uh, and I think that's going to sort of detract from its collectability, because you know if you look at Archie's own advice, it's steel all steel sports Rolexes, right? Um, 
but again, it fits him and it looks the part. It gives that little bit of bling. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I'm not a, I'm not a two tone guy, but but the blue is so beautiful on a bluesy that it's almost forgivable. I mean, it's it's it's. I, I if they ever came out with like a bluesy, uh, all steel, that's just. I think the internet would explode. Um, that would be amazing. I don't know if it would work. I don't know if they that 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 pop of that color on all steel. I don't know if it would work, but um, that would be amazing. Will they ever do it? Hell no. They're not going to do that. Um, it's like it would be too popular. It's like uh, the, Rolex. There's just certain things that Rolex could do that would just people would go crazy, and it's people already go crazy for for things that aren't even that that spectacular so uh it's it's almost like uh they don't they don't need to do that uh that's if if ever if ever relax gets into trouble they'll they'll do that you know if, if you ever see that happen then maybe it means that they, they need money or something but yeah that's probably not gonna happen so um so anyway yeah he's got a a great collection five relaxes um I mean, I would say I would say try to get more into that that cream of the crop tier, uh, steel, professional, informational, uh, bezeled uh, watches. You got you got one so far, um, and, and you'd have two if they weren't two tone. Uh, but if you like the two tone, cool. If um, but if you're looking at sort of. Uh, collector's items i would i would say if those were were steel i think that you'd, you'd have more potential there archie um i think the the explorer and the milgauss very usable uh you'll probably always get your money back but again i don't think um you know they're just they're just a different tier than 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 that top top tier and for that reason i don't think they'll ever take off i don't think ever people will ever go uh crazy over uh, those milk houses. I don't, I don't think there's ever going to be like a milk house craze. Um, or, you know, in the Explorer one is just uh, ubiquitous enough that, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, they're, they're making them still. They're making them still. So, uh, yeah, um, I think you'll retain your money, but, you know, I don't, I don't think that, that it's, um, you know, I don't think it's it's gonna go up like, uh, say, you know, an old uh, pre-ceramic sea dweller. Um, so, yeah, uh, look, I mean, the 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 pontiff. I mean, having a bit of bling works with the pontiff. Uh, it would almost be weird to see him just go straight straight steel 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 um the 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 daytona works better with his personality i mean it's sort of it's sort of loud and garish and gaudy like like the character of archie so that kind of works um and and same with the the sub the sub is great i gotta say i i, I do i do love the sub so my favorite is probably oh, it's a toss-up between the sub and the explorer too uh, the Daytona is amazing uh, because Daytona, any Daytona is amazing. Uh, but while the two tone Daytona is amazing, the all steel Daytona is like, like really amazing. All right, so that would have been worth a little extra. But again, I think he got a huge deal on that, and that thing, I think that's how he got that. Um, and. Uh, and Explore and the Milgauss are respectable and solid, but nobody's going crazy over them. Probably nobody ever will. All right. I mean, great, great stuff. And uh, thanks for, for doing this, Archie. And hey, make a, a response video if, you, if you'd like. And what do you think about what I think? And viewers, what do you think about what I think? Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.